the cosplay video, just run it alongside us if you could. Um, it's not structured like the Wings and Things was. And I do want to say um, right off the bat that we are very, we're not happy that someone else is sick, uh, but we are very grateful uh, to redo the Wings and Things uh, panel because it's, uh, yeah. It, it was a little chaotic. Yeah, poor poor Martin. He's he's like, I'm how like, dare you abandon me? Do I go on? I'll go on alone. I'm sure I, I you know I I want to I want to do this. I want to make sure that I go on that, that we put that content. You've only done you've yeah. only done panels a couple times alone, and, and you've yeah. had a hard time with it, oh, haven't you? Yeah. Oh my god! Come and on, then, you have a personality. You I don't do, have to keep I relying do. on me. Sometimes okay. I have too many personalities. <laughs> <laughs> so. Production to Cosplay uh, came about a number of years ago uh, when we started working in the film industry and we were already doing a lot of cosplay panels. And we realized the biggest thing was people were trying to replicate uh, and they don't have the budget of a production. Um, so we started production to cosplay. Uh, and the key thing with it is the fact that we wanted to save people money and we didn't want them to be discouraged. We were starting to go from competing uh, to judging, and uh, we didn't want people to basically um, give up too soon. Uh, and we wanted them to feel good about their cosplays. So we've now left the production industry. We've now left being uh, full-time prop makers. We burnt out. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in the film industry and in television and entertainment since I was eight years old. I'm now 54. Uh, it's been an intense ride, and Martin joined me 35 years ago. It's true. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been an intense ride. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we are still doing this panel because we still have the knowledge. Uh, we've got our own small company that builds for people, custom builds for people, and we're, we're looking at in the near future doing craft shows or dealer tables, or tables and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now we're just trying to work up uh, product with materials we have left to keep our brains going and, and active. So don't be scared of asking questions, but at the same time, don't be scared to get a custom quote if you feel you can't handle it. Um, we've been requested to start doing uh, one hour consultations. So um, we're going to set a price for that. Uh, we're thinking around $30, $35, one hour at a time, uh, and do it through the Kofi. Uh, so don't be scared to ask us about that as well. Uh, because it is a thought that's been on our minds. And uh, you guys are the ones that if you need more, we want to give you more. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So that's a small little introduction as to how this came about, and where we're going now. The big thing with production is they have a budget. Um, if, if, uh, if we could get uh, the production to cosplay uh, video up uh, alongside us. We could run us, yeah, side by side. Um, that would be awesome. And uh, while she fusses with that, uh, da, 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 there it is. Yay. So that video is just a haphazard kind of uh, mishmash of, uh, of visuals from random cosplay as well as uh, productions. It's basically to, to kick your brain into gear and uh, give you ideas for questions. So... We're going to make sure that you kind of focus on your questions and hold them for a minute. Um, we're going to start with the basics, the simpler things. And that's, it's, well, it's simple in my mind. Um, that's the ability to find fabrics that have the pattern or the texture or whatever you actually need on it. Mm -hmm. um, did you bring out my poncho? I'll go grab the poncho. You didn't Point grab the I missed. Now that we're doing the two panels back to back, it's like something's removed out of the room and, and, and back in and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So while he goes and grabs my my Leia poncho, these are wings that aren't part of the wings of the things, but again, it's it's a good example. Uh, when Cleopatra, my Cleopatra outfit has now fallen apart. All that's left is the skirt and the uh, the wings. Uh, everything else is 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 dead. <laughs> dead. It was made so many years ago. So this is my Cleopatra poncho. And, um, you know, it's got the little wrist things. I'm not going to bother fussing with them right now. And it's old, old lame. And it's starting to leave, like, um, gold dust on everything I sit on when I wear it. Um, 
But yeah, it's gold lame. Actually, why don't you put it on? Adam suit. Yes, we'll uh, we'll talk about the Adam. Yes, we'll talk about the Adam suit. We'll definitely talk about the Adam suit. Okay. Okay. Um, okay so this this great. makes it easier. So when they did the production, they had a black mesh. So this is warmer than hers, but that's fine. I'm not actually out in Egypt. Um, they had a black mesh with the gold pieces stitched down with little. You can literally see the stitch lines in between. I wasn't going to do that. I didn't have the budget. I didn't have the time. Uh, this took a while, but no, nowhere near as long as it would be to, to sew different pieces on. So we had this lame from lame curtains from a theater that went under. And Martin was working for a uh, theater lighting company. And uh, so we snagged them. We went and found an interesting fabric to put on the inside. Because hers, you can see the black mesh on the inside. I didn't want it to just be lame. I wanted some texture. So again, even though I was replicating the one from the movie, I, I did it the way I wanted to. I personalized it. And then I took black fabric paint and one of the little chalky markers for, for you know, being a seamstress. And I basically drew this all out on the lame and then very carefully painted all that black in order to get the same effect you get in the movie. Cheaper, simpler, a little quicker. Now, you think lame, how does it hang that heavy? Because lame is really, really lightweight. Well, this is the trick. Fishing oars. Fishing weights, yeah. Fishing weights, yeah. That you hook onto your lure when you, so it'll fly, right? They're usually made out of lead. Don't put them in your mouth. <laughs> I don't know if they, they make newer ones out of the- I don't know what they make them out of now, but uh, that's what they made them out of back then. But they're soft, so we could hammer them flat and just create a little pocket from the shiny material in order to give the weight. Now hers in the movie, because it's all these little pieces uh, on the top of a black mesh, it stayed just fine. Mm -hmm. But the lame is gonna flip everywhere. And in the movie, she, I think she only wears it when, uh, when, she, comes during, in when to, she comes into Rome, right? Yeah. Uh, on the, uh, on the, the procession, big, the big yeah. parade and everything. Yep. So this needed to be worn in multiple you know, situations and on stage and Oh my costume. God, when the stage lights right. hit the that MA, works. I was so happy. Shady. It just Kinda reflected just right it, back at the audience. With our lights, yeah. And it's great because it's not they're not that big, but once you open them up, they they the, the lame, the sparkle, the and I would rather see you people use metallic fabrics than put sparkle dust on top that I've only get everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna quickly go on to um, my Leia. The military belt we found at a you know a surplus store, just toss it to the side. Toss it to the side. Toss on the cap. So we can get as much in as possible, and then right. reset for wings. Okay. So this is my Princess Leia, the poncho. Again, I wanted something that I could put things under if the weather was cold, um, and then turn it around again. There we go. There's the hood. Okay. I wanted something that I could that I could hide layers under when I, when it's cold out. Um, and something that doesn't have much when it's warm out, because of course, you know, no sleeves, right? The little gray shirt on, I was lucky. I was blessed to find the right shirt, right? I didn't, I, I was running out of time to sew uh, denim pants, which is what she's got, is cotton pants uh, in a denim look. So I found leggings that are the same color and, uh, cause we don't see her waistline. So it works. You know, I put the stripe down the side. I just hand stitched it. It's best when you're working with stretch fabric and non-stretch fabric is to put the non down while you're wearing it. Mm -hmm. Like get someone else to pin it down and then it sew it where it is <laughs> because then it won't, it won't stretch. You see it's stretching because there's extra fabric underneath that, that fabric that doesn't stretch. Right. If you don't do that, then you get all these pucker lines and uh, it doesn't look as nice. Yeah. You know, but tear. I could not, for the life of me, find this particular fabric. Her her fatigue colors are different than the boys. It's lighter. So I airbrushed this with fabric paints. I had a cheapy little airbrush, which suited me just fine. I took the white fabric. I airbrushed it first, not after it's sewn, because if an area screws up, you just avoid it when you cut it. I just use standard cotton, fabric paint, watered down in an airbrush, outdoors with the cotton over a line, and just airbrushed it. 
you know, and then even then it was still too white. So after I put it all together, I looked at it and said, it's still too white. It's still shining through too much. So I made a large vat of black tea, threw it in super hot water in the bathtub and threw the damn thing in. Took a chance that I was going to ruin all of my work. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy I did because it took away the white, white glare that was coming off of it and dulled it a little bit and made it kind of beigey. So don't be scared of fabric paints. Fabric paints are like heaven sent. Yes, they are. Since yeah. someone's sitting on the chair, which chair does he have? He's got, uh, he's got, got stands. stands chair. He's got stands. So our cat today is Stanley. Yum, yum, lead. <laughs> he's, 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 he's directing. Um, <laughs> get to see it after all. Yes. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I am. I am feeling better, Captain uh, Pyra. Uh, it was obviously something I had ate because about the middle of the day, I wound up on the toilet very painfully. Yeah. Um, this pain went away, but <sighs> yeah. So it was obviously something I ate. Um, Aero production photos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've this is this is the short version of the video. Um, if we were to put together a production list uh, of every production we've worked on, um, stage, TV, film, even independent film, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, it's like, I'd say we're up double-sided, 10 point, about six or seven pages now. About seven pages, yeah. Just one line for each production? Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've been going through photos to scan them and there's a bunch of photos where I'm walking up to Martin going, do you remember what production this was? Because I don't. Yeah, this is true. Say, oh, we forgot about that one. Once we finally figure out what production it was. It's no wonder we burnt out yeah. and we ran our own events yeah. in BC and yeah, we burnt out. Yeah. So I'm putting my water there. Please be careful. Okay. All right. So, uh, you didn't pull down the crooked flail. I did not pull We're talking about simple flail. things. Grab the crooked flail, please. I will grab the crooked flail. Okay. Off the wall. Off the wall. They're currently tied together. Here we go. They are tied together. So, I, you know, uh, crooked flail. People are like, oh, it looks so nice. What'd you do? All we did was take, um... God, this was so long ago. That's acrylic rod. Acrylic rod, yeah. yeah. Heated it up which please do carefully, heated it up, took a can about the right size, and of course, oven mitts, right? And pulled it. Right. Try not to get the oven mitts on the, the area that's really heated, or you might wind up with acrylic on your oven mitts. Yeah. And the oven so, mitt pattern imprint on your acrylic. Yeah, like so you want to take just past, and that's how we get that nice straight little spot, and just past, and pull it around. And then you paint it afterwards, and it's a simple masking job. With with we use automotive paints a lot because automotive paints bite into plastics. Even in the industry, we use automotive paints a lot. Yeah. Uh, Canadian Tire's got a huge range, and if you um, sometimes the numbers will change. So because a new car comes on the market that's the same color, so they change the core number and then they put out a new cheater book. Find out in the cheater book, make, model, and color name. Because that way, even if they change the code number, all you have to do is go to that little book, find your make, model, and color name, and it'll give you the number, and that's easy. It makes it easy to find on the shelf, okay? Yeah. The flail is, you know, um, fishing wire with the beads on it, and this is a brass tube. And what we did was we put a needle, a long needle, through a piece of cork, and then put glue inside, really any glue, anything that can really easily dry without having fresh air. So anything that relies on air drying, don't. Like I usually just shove hot glue in. It, yeah. It's high temp hot glue, not the stuff you let the kids near. Yeah. But the high temp warning you, blister city, if you get it on you, so be very careful. And the metal will cool it down really fast. So it's a matter of having that cork ready, cut to size, and then fill that inside with high temp hot glue. So get a high temp gun, um, and then just shove it in there. 
I recommend you push it in with a stick or something, not your own finger, in case some of the hot glue does get around. Because mm -hmm. no matter how perfectly you trim that sucker to fit, but be careful because now this is all together. If you break these, it's you can't get it back in, kind of so you got to try to invisible fix it. This one actually has been fixed. You can see there's there's some tie here, so it's made it, it's weaker now. So we're we're a little more careful with it than we used to be, and there used to be three of them. So, yay! All right, let's get into actual production. You're blessed to be online. Because we no longer take this piece out to conventions anymore for panels. Because it is so, so fragile. I used to wear it uh, during panels. Every once in a blue moon, you're blessed by a production that they give you a gift. It's rare. And some of the stuff we've had from FX, the series, um, has, uh, uh, has deteriorated and is gone. Uh, those watching on, on, on TikTok, you're, you're getting a bit of a delay. So... Don't worry, it'll come. Um, that is one of the Cyclops visors. From the first X-Men movie. So this is before companies like Smooth On made flexible plastics. So in this no case, <laughs> a, um, a combination between a static plastic and a rubber had to be mixed together and experimented with over and over again to get the right mixture in order to make his visors. It's like a hidden gem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, this no longer, we used to bring it to conventions, but it's so fragile now. Yeah. It's There's no flexibility to it anymore. But the flexibility allowed it to just go on his face. And then, of course, there's the folding version. And then there's the version that had the light in it uh, for the FX guys to find. And there was nine of these made? Um, actually, ultimately, I think there were close to 20 of them that made. 20 by there were done? four different variations and, and four or five of each of each one. But nine of this one. Nine of this of this particular, this particular one. Yeah. one. Yeah, that makes sense. Because this was the most common. Because there was the only three of the electronic wear. ones. This is the one he would wear and be able to look through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, there were only nine people that got gifts. Of course, the producer, uh, the key producer got one. Mm -hmm. uh, no, he got one of the electronic ones. Yeah. And the two co-producers got these. Yeah. Um, but yeah. James Marsden got one of these. Yeah. Um, the boss of Jim got one of these. Yeah. We got one. So they're they're all scattered everywhere. There's some that went to auction that were broken. They were mostly the ones that hinge for that one scene um, where um, Toad. God, it's no, not oh. Toad. That one was one of these. Um, oh, um, Sabretooth. Saber it's after Tooth. Toad snatches it, Sabretooth right. folds it up and puts it in, puts the pocket in his pocket. In his coat, That's right. right. There was only, like, I mean, we had to make multiples of those in case something went wrong, and they did. They were so unstable that uh, they just kept snapping at the hinges. And that's where this one keeps snapping, too, because they're all the same mold. Just this one doesn't have a hinge in it. It's glued together. This area right in here is where the hinge goes. So you can do things like this. You usually have to do a mold. And there are more smooth on products out there than there was before. There's a lot more. And what I always do is I love my artist plaster seam. Get medium weight. Don't get super hard. Don't get super soft. Super soft means you have to get it done now. Mm -hmm. Because it will start sagging. Gravity will have its way. Uh, hard means your hands are going to hurt like hell. It certainly is a hand workout. Yeah. So get, you know, do a face mask or do a whole head, get someone to come and do the plaster and everything and just sculpt it out of plaster seam until it looks right to you. And there's now products that weren't really around back then. Go through this, you know, go through the smooth on uh, smooth on does a lot of tutorials online, go through their online tutorials, decide which product you're going to get, find who your local distributor is because they only allow one per major area. So that there's no competition in their products. Um, and yeah, and make a mold, make a casting, which is really easy. If you want to do it cheap, just do it with plaster. Understand it's not going to last long. Right? But it gets, it gets it done. You'll at least get one or two out of it. 
and always make it a two part because of course you need the spot for your head. Mm -hmm. So you need a two part mold. So all the inside detail. So you're making the outside mold over top of your plaster scene, right? And then you're making it so it fits. So you go past the, the, the past the item onto your head. And then you're going to use your positive of the head to be your inside. So you're going to attach it on, you know, put it in a, 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 a nest of something so that it can lie on its, your head can lie on the back of your head. Mm -hmm. And just pour and roll your head around whatever technique you want to use. There's so many techniques. But if you've already got a casting of your head or even half, you know, just your face, make sure behind the ears because you want to put this over your ear and make sure it's flexible enough that you can slide it on. So these wound up costing. Oh, God. Because the Oakley. The day, they were probably about 10000 each. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the, the Oakley sent us the lenses. Mm -hmm. So you could definitely do it for less than ten thousand oh. dollars, and this was years ago, so it'd be worth more now. Mm -hmm. We got an offer from an American who had bought one of the costumes, and she got a hold of us and said, well, "I want to buy it from you," and she offered us forty five thousand dollars U.S. And we had to say no for two reasons: number one, it's a gift that we don't want to give up. Yeah. Period. I don't care how much I'm starving. This sucker's staying with me. A lot of our stuff is gone now. Uh, this, 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 no. Um, it's not leaving her no. Home, yeah. And and secondly, it's illegal because we would be making money off the production's design. The production owns the design for this. For forty five thousand one time payment, it's not worth losing a career over. We can make you one that's close. It's a ten percent difference breaks the copyright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're going to make it at a higher level. So if you want to play, you want to experiment, you want to learn, just just play with your cheaper materials. You'll probably only get one or two out of it after all that sculpting. Um, and the, the red lens, just use a clear. Uh, you can even use like the front of a package or whatever, uh, anything that's, that's thin and flexible clear. And Hilarious. you can get samples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you can get samples of theater gels from uh gel companies like and you can even buy them on amazon they're they're sold now as um for putting in front of old lights mm -hmm. for photography they're not really they're really expensive you buy them by the roll they used to be dirt cheap mm -hmm. um but uh yeah just get a theater gel and put it in you'll be able to see through it um it'll be hard to see back through it because your face is creating a shadow and uh there you go you've got your cyclops visor or any other visor that you want um wow cool thank you so all right next item uh the helmets and i'm going to drink water while you talk okay uh, it's you're going to be <coughs> a puppet i can be the puppet oh yeah. okay so you drink water and i'll and well, i'll talk like, talk. I'm, like yeah. a uh, you'll talk a like you. dummy. <laughs> so this is uh from stargate sg1 these were the uh, the Ori helmets. Uh, originally, the Ori helmets were a lot more. They were they were all like bronze and, and uh, di different color details and everything. Very, very steampunk kind of aesthetic to the Ori. Uh, but this helmet was uh, painted up as a paint test for some of the silvers that we were using. the uh, The original helmet was hand sculpted, and if you look at uh, you can see all the runes and the details and everything. They're all hand carved in uh, plasticine. Molds were made of it, and then it was laid up in fiberglass. So you can sort of see on the inside. Uh, the texture of the uh, the inside of the fiberglass. Uh, all the the vents for the uh, for breathing were were carved out with a Dremel. Uh, I believe in the final versions there were uh, lenses put in in place. This is the, what we the, call uh, a eyes. test version. Mm -hmm. This is what you bring into production and say, "Is this what you're after?" Yeah, and the neck guards again. They were also cast in uh, in uh, fiberglass. Actually, all no, these were cast in a soft foam, so you, you can see it's. It's uh, a little bit more flexible. It goes over the shoulders and uh, some purchased uh, um, chain, chain mail and everything riveted together. Uh, to get automotive that spray. Look, automotive spray uh, and then the leather, leather chin strap. We tend to do one color when we do a test piece um, because it's not distracting and it gives mm -hmm. the production the chance to say, okay, can you get this color? Because everything shows. And it's usually something like a silver or a gold, depending on what it is. Um, very rarely is it other colors. Because yeah. the final job is, is 
done on a, like, I mean, it differently. When using things like automotive spray and fiberglass and anything like that, we don't, personally, we don't like using fiberglass. So if we were to remake one of these, um, we would not be using fiberglass. No. We'd be using like a smooth on product. Mm -hmm. um, yay, smooth on! We should yay, rename our on. panel smooth on products, right? S smooth um, on at home. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, please, well ventilated. Absolutely, yeah. Work outside if you can. If not, uh, find find somewhere where you can vent uh, a lot of air out through a window. Don't use your bathroom fan because uh, a oh it's God. not adequate, and b it's going to stink up your neighbors, especially if you're in an apartment building. We had someone do that. They were so proud of themselves. They came to our next panel and they're like, I did what you said. I got in trouble. I'm like, which what I said. Oh, my <laughs> well-ventilated area. Where? The bathroom with the fan. But I got in trouble. Yeah, because she was in an older building and the exhaust fan pushed the fumes into everyone else's apartment. They had like a shared exhaust duct for all the bathrooms on that level or on that bed. That vertical. Uh, let's see what else they add about this one. Uh, obviously, it was painted black on the inside so that it's very nondescript in, inside. And there's Velcro patches uh, glued in here because uh, we had different foam pads available for the different uh, different head sizes. So you can put basically Velcro the foam pads in, take them out uh, to clean them or whatever, and uh, then be able to put them back in again. The trick with Velcro is make sure whatever's going to be against your skin, your hair, or anything else like that, make sure it's the soft half of the Velcro. Exactly. Okay. The soft half of the Velcro. Because it's going to be sticking and scratching and irritating. Even yeah. when you do like Velcro straps behind your head, right? Make sure the one that goes down on top is, is the your soft. soft side. Yep. So the rough is facing out. And that way you won't be pulling your hair out. Well, yeah. at least the costume won't be pulling your hair exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one of these has time on it. Oh, good. We're doing good. Yeah. We're going. Do, we're I, did, doing very I did set a timer. So. Oh, just a little sigh. This is early, early this is, in, our, in our... We still do things this way. <laughs> Back then, printer's tin was the in thing. You could go into a print shop or a manufacturing company and say, um, let me buy your printer's tin before you send it to the recycling company. And they'll sell it to you for the same price as the recycling company gives them, which is next to nothing. I don't know if schools can still do that or what. But printer's tin was the be all and end all for us, especially mm -hmm. since it painted really well. But yeah, we would yeah. just screw and rivet things together and you can cut it with just the cutter. Just make sure that if you use anything like metals like this that are easy to cut, remember they're also easy to cut you. Because they're very thin and they'll end up with jagged, sharp edges, right, from cutting. So yeah, sand them, sand the edges so that you don't cut yourself. So any metals like this, and we had the head made out of it too. It's now fiberglass. This was back in the eighties, but you can still do this kind of stuff um, because you know, the signal towards the car that we salvaged in order to make this little guy, um, the signal was being scattered by the metal. So we redid only the front part where the, the antenna is basically in his forehead as far away from the metal as possible. So, yeah, think about things like that. We didn't back then. We made our mistakes. So the rest of you don't have to, I hope. <laughs> Jeez, I'm just, I'm just yeah, looking I know, back and going, oh, how we my did God. things 35 years ago. <sighs> that was literally, that was almost 35 years ago that we built that one. Yeah, definitely. And we actually, we found it. I just restarted the video. Oh, okay, awesome. Oh, thank yes. you. Cool. Yeah, we can just keep That's the video awesome. rolling yeah. as, as we talk because there's nothing specific to the, the content. Actually, I'm, I'm pointing in this direction. There's nothing specific to the content. Ooh, Perfect. Awesome. Leaning over. Leaning thank over. Oh, that's the egg. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is what we mean by a two-part mold. There's a rule whenever you're doing castings and molds. Do you have one of the pieces? Uh, nope, but I can grab one very quickly. That would help. It would help. 
Dude. Um, we really quickly poured a sample piece. So it's, it's bubbly and, and crappy, but it, it'll give you an idea of a two-part mold. Um, we printed out the piece originally, and we couldn't get a high enough resolution to get rid of the print lines. So we covered the original in um, a coating. You can really use anything because it, it only has to last temporarily for you to do the, the mold. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's smooth on the outside because we took the original print and, and we, we coated it. What did we use again? Uh, it's, a, it's another smooth on product called XTC3D. Uh, for basically for smoothing out 3D prints. It's two-part epoxy, so you brush it on, it fills all those little print lines, wait for it to cure, and then you sand it off. And sometimes you have to do it a couple of times, depending on how... You know, so that's what we did to the original, so you can see it's it's smooth. There's bubbles because we did it really quickly. But uh, it, it's smooth on the outside because the, the original was smooth. Mm -hmm. And basically, we, we used a box that was the right size. You can go back in there. Yes. And what you do when you do the box is, is basically you put the bottom of the box where that opening is. Right? And then you pour whatever you're deciding to use for a mold. Rule of thumb, you want a hard item, you use a flexible mold. You want a flexible item, you use a hard mold. So if you're doing something flexible, make your mold out of something like plaster, cheap plaster. But if you're doing something solid like this, make your mold out of like Smooth On Again has a whole bunch of these products. Yeah. They're they're not cheap, but if you use them wisely, it'll work. Mm -hmm. We used to do it with latex, but we discovered that the latex would touch the items and we'd have people with latex allergies that would be using the item on their performance and they'd respond. Yeah, they get that, that, that content. Um, so we now invest yeah. because if you don't get all the residual from the latex off your item, someone with a latex allergy is going to just get sick. Um, nice. So that would have been the bottom of the box to make this part. And then you pull the box apart and you pull that bottom off and you go this way, making a taller, right? You don't need a bottom now because this is the bottom. And then you pour Make sure you use the right mold release mm -hmm. for the item. There's all kinds of different spray mold releases and stuff available. Uh, if detail isn't really an issue, you can use Vaseline, which I think was what we used on this because mm -hmm. the release was going on the inside, which isn't a big deal. So you brush Vaseline into it, and that keeps your uh, first part of your mold from sticking to your second part of your mold. So Vaseline anywhere inside your original you know, along the edge, you don't want anything to stick. Uh, thousand one paper boxes. Yeah, someone who has latex allergies running in the family. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, you can see before we poured the second half, we cut these spaces here. Sometimes we'll screw some screws in, you know, nuts, bolts, whatever, uh, in order to make, you got to make sure one side's a bump, one side's a hole. Yeah, there's keys to make sure that your mold right. always lines up. So, yeah, in this case, we cut that ahead of time. We put Vaseline in there, pushed it in with a cheapy dollar store brush because they're nice and stiff, and you just push it all into any spot just in case. And then, of course, when we poured the other half, we've got the four little bumps on the edges, so it'll always key up, and you'll always get the same pour. Also, make sure you decide before you even start where your pour hole is going to be or if you're going to do a pour hole hole. It's better. This one didn't, which we made a mistake. Um, so we kind of tried to make them after the fact and it didn't work. Uh, so we wound up using it as an, as an air hole. You see there's two holes here because we decided to do a mush mold, right? Which is where you just push it together. You pour the stuff in and you push it together. The other half of the mold will take up the space and push it out. But we forgot to remember that that also creates air bubbles. Because mm -hmm. you're moving it around for too long a time. The longer cure, the longer time cure resins, you can do, uh, you can 
work them a little bit uh, by basically tapping the cup and getting all the bubbles to work to the surface of the, of the cup and then blowing them off either by blowing on them, don't inhale, <laughs> don't inhale. <laughs> or use a, use a heat gun or a blow dryer to just uh, gently uh, get the bubbles on the surface to pop. And then you can pour and work with it. That only works with the slow cure resins. The fast cure, you don't have enough time to do that. But a push mold too, you've got these holes for your overflow. So air is getting in there as you're pushing. Mm -hmm. Well, then flat molds, pour holes are intimidating. They can be at first. Yeah, they can be. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's just a matter of where, deciding where on your design the pour hole should be mm -hmm. and make sure that portion of the design is a little bigger. So you can just sand it off or, or cut it off. or A good a good rule of thumb to think of is, is to, uh, consider gravity. Uh, gravity and buoyancy. The air has got to go up. So any air holes have to be near the top of your part. And any pore holes are actually best if they're down below. That way, as the material is coming in, it's coming in from the bottom, rather than pouring it on top where you trap air all over the place. And keep tapping. Makes sense. Yeah, keep, keep tap, tap your mold. So we call it spank your mold. Just keep spanking your mold and make sure all the bubbles go up to the top. Bad mold. And if you have to re, you know, pour a little bit more in because the air bubbles have come out and your, your uh, resin has settled, then uh, you, know, you, can, you have the opportunity to do that. <laughs> this is dusty now it is very dusty he's going great like me if you've got a budget that's great buy what you need mm -hmm. if you don't have a budget make what you need make what you need um this is back when we worked for paramount this also doesn't come the panels with us anymore because this was one of the latex prosthetics from way way back in the mm -hmm. 90s this would create allergies this one was almost 30 years ago too then wasn't it yeah um, it's still together. The edge is ruined from putting it on and off all the time, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, uh, it's still one piece. So it's still on our display stand. Um, we always, whenever we touch it afterwards, we wash our hands just in case. But this is, again, it was a two part mold with his face and the plaster scene. And we used latex back then we used mm -hmm. latex for everything. Now we don't because, yeah, there's there's a lot of latex allergies. There's some great silicones out there now, too, for doing prosthetics. That, uh, well, Dragon Skin others. Prosthetic Grade. Yeah, Dragon Skin FX Pro. And it's really soft silicone. You can add pigments to it. There's specific pigments for silicones. And you can get, get some great results out of that. And when you do, like, always make sure you paint afterwards with, like, a cream makeup. And then just powder over top. Or if you want that, you can see this has got a very skin tone sheen to it. It's a little dull because it's been sitting on a shelf for, for 30 years. Um, mm. But uh, if you want this real kind of effect, uh, again, a um, little KY jelly. No, we're not that kind of broadcast. We're but a teeny tiny bit of KY jelly after you do all the cream makeup and everything and massage the cream. Don't use a paintbrush because it's really not worth it. And it's that whole hide things by bringing attention to things. So you, you take a little bit of the cream makeup and you mix it with a little bit of red wherever the seam's going to be once you put it on, right? You just kind of use the same makeup to blend. Um, and there are better makeups now than there was back then. But a little mm -hmm. tiny bit of KY jelly over top of the makeup, just a tiny bit. It's a little bit of gloss. Gives it a little, little bit of gloss, gloss, makes it a little more yeah. like skin. Now, I couldn't find a wig that was up to Paramount standards. So I took a cheap, like, dollar store wig, trimmed off all the hair, leaving me with just the netting. Then I went to, you know, those stores that are mostly for black people and they have the big, huge braids and they're usually about six bucks, seven well, the, bucks the, for a braid. The hair and beauty supply outlets. Right. right there, yeah. And the more out of the city or the more into a black neighborhood you go, your predominantly black neighborhood you go, the more likely you'll find them at a better price. And they have these great synthetic hair braids, these big braids that... Uh, that they use the braid into their own hair and then they melt the end. And that's why when you look at a lot of black women's hair, you'll see the ends, there's no elastic there. Mm -hmm. It's because it's synthetic, they just melt it. And it just sticks together and they don't damage their own hair. So I learned that back when I used to look like Boy George because I did that a lot for my own hair. Mm -hmm. But you can get these great colors. 
And some of them you can get kinked like this. Some of them you get dead straight, however you want. And I literally took two of the braids. This is two braids. So this cost me like $12 for this thick, this thick. It hair. It is a warm wig. It is probably, probably the warmest wig. But it was wig. up to Paramount standards. And oh, that's why you got yeah. hired all the time. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, you know, you want to get hired, you got to do what's good, right? And we didn't have the budget back then. Um, but yes, I rug hooked little sections at a time, which is why it's hard to see it. I rug hooked this hair five times as thick as the original cheapy dollar store wig. I just wanted the netting. I just wanted the base of it. Base to work with. Yeah. And when you're doing something like this, where you want hair to go to a prosthetic and you want to look, want it to look natural. Again, we used latex back then. Um, just use whatever product you're using for the rest of the head. Put it, once you attach the piece down onto the rest of the wig, right, onto the wig itself. And this wig was too small for him, so you can see how far back we actually wound up sticking it down. Take the hair that's at that edge, put the stickiness down, flip the hair forward, just the front pieces, flip them forward. In other words, do your braids and everything after the fact. Right. Let it dry with it stuck into the stuff forward and then flip it back. And that's how you create a hairline. And then you don't see the edge of the, the, the wig. So it doesn't look like a wig. It actually winds up looking like part of your head. Yeah. So there's that. Again, they would have a professional wig maker and they would have... And the you know, foreheads usually get all the prosthetics get put on first, and then the wig is applied afterwards. But but if you got the nice patience, piece thing that's uh, quick to uh, to work with. And again, buy yourself some wig pins. Uh, people always wonder what what's the difference between a wig pin and a regular hair pin. Regular hair pin is basically designed to hold just hair. Mm -hmm. Wig pins are the rounder ones. So you put them in the wrong way. Then you twist them back, like you squeeze them. You put them in the wrong way, you twist them back, you push it in, pulling your hair against the wig or your cap. Like the netted um, wig caps are best. If you don't have the budget for that, go get a dollar store pair of nylons, cut off the legs, tack stitch, the openings close, and you've got a wig cap. But yeah, you put it in, and then once you're sure it's in, you let go. And when it pushes the pressure against, the wig netting and your own hair, it basically binds them all together. So that's the difference mm -hmm. between a wig pin and a regular pin. Uh, la, la, la. No, which one am I looking at? Yeah, okay, 10 minutes, 10 minutes on left. On this segment. Um, I guess canine's not going to come out. The other stuff can come out afterwards. Uh, like the horns that. and stuff can be part of wings and things if we got time for it. Uh, this would be a good time for anyone to ask questions, uh, so we can morning, shift. So we, the so we can shift everything around. And we have a cat who's diving behind the couch cushions. I don't know what for. Ignore him. He's a cat. I will ignore him. There's nothing back there that <laughs> he can get. He's upset that the you. cosplay for Adam suit. Oh yes, Adam suit. We have questions about the Adam suit. Quick, quick, well, give him a breakdown of the uh, Adam suit. The original Adam suit, uh, we had a full body scan done of uh, Brandon, Brandon Routh, the actor, and the suit itself was designed in the computer in CAD software. Yes, we had a full body scan. We had a full body scan the of Brandon Routh. In the shop. Uh, what was our favorite build? Actually, uh, for ourselves. Um, Hold on, finish the Adam suit quickly. We'll, we'll finish the Adam suit. Um, like, thanks so for only everything was designed schedule. in the computer. Uh, 3D molds were machined. On a CNC milling machine, uh, there was a lot of uh, a lot of test uh, test uh, parts and, and, and fittings and stuff done with them. From the origin, from the actual molds, we did vacuum form shells for all the components for the suit. The costume department made all the soft stuff, so the undersuit itself. Uh, so everything was vacuum formed, uh, glued together, painted. Uh, everything's like velcroed or bolted onto the undersuit, so things can be removed for replacement. Uh, we did a lot of fifth tests, mobility tests with Brandon and a bunch of rebuilds. So the original Adam suit cost probably close to a quarter of a million dollars to produce. And then we 
we built two more at about sixty thousand dollars each. Backup uh, for him as a backup for him and, and one stunt. for the stunt guy. Because the stunt so, one was going to be yeah. destroyed. Oh yeah, it got trashed regularly. So we're constantly spare parts being made for the Adam suit. It didn't and, have all the electronics yeah. in it either. Uh, it actually it did. Some of it. Ultimately, we we ended up. They wanted the full electronics package in the stunt suit as well. Oh, did that get added that afterwards? That got added oh. after the fact. Yeah. So the the stunt suit and the the hero suit have all the little blue LEDs all over the place. The LEDs can change color. Uh, the color can be changed as well. And the elbows and shoulder joints and even the knees had little motors in them to get the little discs to move like they were servos that were keeping his suit like stabilized and everything. So it was a lot. It was a, it was a huge build. It was about six months to produce the original suit. And then parts and parts were constantly being made during the course of the production. But trying to dress him. Trying to dress him was always fun. You can get a similar effect. Um, yeah, but he, he squirms yeah. like a he squirms Like, like a, a five, yeah. yeah, like trying to put a five-year-old in a snowsuit. You know? Yeah. Because he's on his phone, he's texting with his agent, or he's reading his script and stuff like that while you're trying to dress him in, the, in Sit, usually in a bad environment, still. in a tent. <laughs> you know, in a tent on location somewhere in the freezing cold. <laughs> um, Go ahead. But you can get a similar effect by using vacuum forming techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of tutorials online on how to make your own vacuum form. And uh, if you use things like the white styrene, I'm not going to get into chemical breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, if you use things like the white styrene, please keep in mind, the more it's out in the sunlight, even if you've painted it, uh, the more brittle it can get. Yeah. UV rays really go at it. Um, but it is more stable than something like Warbla. We do not use yeah. Warbla. We just don't. We tried it on a live broadcast for Periscope because everyone was asking us to, and uh, it did no. It's too fragile. It's it's just too fragile. Um, best to use ABS, which is another kind of styrene, but it's much more solid. It requires a little more temperature to get soft. So make sure if you're building your own vac form table that you uh, get the right temperature for the materials you're using. Mm -hmm. But basically you just make the pieces out of wood, out of, you can carve it out of, out of plastics. Just make sure you put something like uh, saran wrap in between when you go to pull. Or tin foil um, even because tinfoil, that'll, yeah. that'll help absorb the heat and won't melt your, your mold underneath. Yep. Um, there are so many things you can make your positive with. And then it's just a matter of heating up the plastics that you chose to use. Please keep in mind, ABS stinks. Again, outside, a fan pointed out a window right next to it, whatever, because when it heats up, it really, it, it really does a number. Wear a mask. Yeah. If, you can, if you can get one of those filter breather masks, those are even better. And then once it's hot enough, you just pull it over. There are still some companies out there. I don't know where because we haven't bothered looking since we came back. But uh, there are companies out there that will do vacuum forming for you. Uh, you just bring in the positive and they make the negative. Yeah. Uh, Dark the Dance Boy, I use Wonderflex as a head base for uh, Fox Robin Hood, but it's pretty much wrecked now. Uh, yeah, I think Wonderflex is very similar to Warbla. It's a, it's a low temperature thermoplastic. Yeah. You can heat it with a heat gun, you can put it in warm water and shape it and flex it. And, but if you're out in the sun or if you're exposed to a lot of heat, it can start deforming. So, Some of our yeah. stuff has been around for so long. It's yeah. because we did not use war <laughs> Um Our favorite. Our favorite build. Last thing. Uh, we don't, we're not even sure what our favorite build is. The Maleficent Wings were a lot of fun to build. We'll get into them in the next panel. That's a personal, yeah. Uh, it's a personal build. Um, Adam Suit was a really, a really fun build, but I think uh, Total Recall... The uh, radio-controlled cars. cars. They're full-scale radio-controlled cars. But there's you know, also the Stargate. The Stargate itself. as well. So it's hard. It's hard to see. On TikTok, I've got footage up. It's a number of videos back, but it's up there. Inside that a was, fursuit. Yeah, inside a fursuit. That's pretty long. Yeah. You know, so, um, it's really hard to say. For our personal stuff, Mutt was a really fun build. He's our steampunk dog. Uh, K9 was a really fun build. It it's really is really hard to pick. You know, it's like, what's, your favorite, what's your favorite child? I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, hard. Those all sound rad. They they were all a lot of fun. You know, sometimes for, it's really hard giving them up to when you're working on a production. Yeah, you learn to let go of your art, you know. Which yeah. is why we still do a lot of our own cosplay and a lot of our own. But a lot of that's going too. A lot of that's gone too. So we had to yeah, every time leave we move, things we have behind. To leave things behind. So so yeah, yeah, it's really hard. That's always been the hardest question. It was yeah. easy when we were like five years into it. But now it's just like, yeah. Yep, exactly, exactly. 
All right. Okay. So we are at uh, 257. So we're we're in pretty good shape That's here. That's good. We have time for one more quick question if you got it in you. Yep, and then we will be moving on to the Wings and Things panel. Yeah, it was hard learning how to give things up, but we had to. Yeah. But you knew your heart was in it. Best production to work for. Stargate. Stargate, Stargate hands down. Yeah. Six years working on that production, it was like a family. Uh, Stargate's one of the few shows that actually had their own prop building shop, the model shop, as part of the show, instead of going out to outside shops to have stuff built for them. So we have the same crew, same 15 people or so, and a, you know, re regular people who would come in as, as overflow when things got really busy for, for years. So being on the show for six years, you have nine months of work that you know you're going to have from February to almost December or and to even, December. Even when we weren't working, like there was... There were years where it's just like repair this. We don't need anything new. Yeah. Um, so we would open the shop to other productions. Mm -hmm. So we we were there a lot. Uh, we went on holidays together. Yeah. You know, we... Wanted to see movies as, as a group. Because some of it, too, is Godzilla. socializing. Yeah, going to see the Godzilla movie. Socializing uh, with anyone outside of the group that you know what everyone's schedule is already. Because uh, other other friends are saying, oh, do you guys want to go and see this tonight? And it's like, well, we can't. We're kind of working on, on a production with everyone else. So when everyone else is done, and we're all finished that production. We're all like, hey, we got some free time. Let's all go see a movie. movie. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay, there's the timer. timer. So, yeah, it, uh, it was a family. Mm -hmm. And they broke that family up. When the production wrapped so. um the other inside with all that was the producers basically there was one left in the end and he threw everything out or came in and grabbed it we didn't even get to bring home yeah. samples the, like the ori helmet and a couple of small bits and pieces and scrap materials we got out before still, they came uh, yeah <laughs> so yeah all right. all right well thank you well, thank you very much uh guys on that so we should we should go away and let the other panelists come in. <laughs> yes, I was going to say. Well, I just have to do a couple things in between, and then um, okay. I'll bring you back in. So don't by. don't don't leave the Google chat. I'll bring you back in, but our viewers okay. will not see you for a second. Okay. 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 Applause. Thank you. Thank you very much.